Say, y'all been asking for it, and we're going to deliver a homemade Mexican dish chilaquiles with, ooh, got a rich traditional red sauce that is homemade to pour over them crispy tortillas, fry an egg. Come on, I have got it ready. I'll be waiting for you. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp for another episode of Cowboy Cooking. My name is Kent Rollins, and whew, we just welcome you all. And if you're a new viewer, hey, you don't want to miss out, so go ahead and reach up there. Hit that subscribe, ring the dingy-dong bell, and you won't miss out on none of this stuff. Now, everything that we're going to use today it will be listed right down there in the little description below, along with the printable recipe link where you can get it. And this is one of my most requested things that has been coming up for quite some time. People be telling me, Kent, can you make... And I couldn't even say the word for a long time. Ch ch chilaquiles. <laughs> I'm pretty. Chilaquiles, chilaquiles, kitty kitty, chilaquiles. <laughs> for those of you who have no idea what this recipe is, because I was there once, you ain't alone. It's sort of like a Mexican nacho cheesy egg breakfast deal, sort of like huevos rancheros. Mm -hmm. To get this started, I invited some of my most special friends over that have always helped me. And you folks have been wanting to meet them. So here they are, chili cascavel. I really like these fellers, I do. Ancho chili, chili ancho, dried. Guajillo chilies, whoo, some of my favorite. These are the same. <laughs> what happened to the chili de arbol? He was in the sack, did he not make the trip? We'll I, have to get on to culinary for that. I, yeah. Well, the chili de arbol is a little bitty red one, and folks, it packs a punch. I'm just using one of them today, but if you don't like the heat, leave it plumb out. And a lot of you are always asking too, we see you using all these dried peppers all the time and we can't get them. But I did a little research for y'all last night. You can get some of these same peppers off Amazon. Yeah. Very first is I'm gonna take them dried peppers, slit them, take the stems and the seeds out of them, just shake them out, lay them there, okay? Except the chili de arbol. But then we're gonna heat as a cast iron skillet over till it gets to smoking. No oil whatsoever, just where it gets good and hot. We've took all them peppers that we have stemmed and seeded out, and we just lay right down in there. You might have to mash them a little. Then next comes in the garlic. So we just wanna toast them just a little to bring out more flavor out of all them chilies. Just sort of stir them around a little. You're gonna to have to flip them maybe once or twice, but make sure you mash them. I would say it's gonna take you maybe four to five minutes to get all this done. And while you're doing that, then you can just set them aside or just leave them right there in that skillet cause the fire's off, let them do that. So we have four Roma tomatoes. You done seen me take the core out of them. Get your stock pot, put you some water in there, enough that's gonna cover all these and steam them. But I want it to come to a rolling bowl. And when it does, turn it off, chunk them in there. Then we're gonna put that onion in there. Then we're gonna put that garlic in there. Then we're gonna put all our peppers in there. And we're gonna let it sit for 15 minutes till they get good and soft. That little chili de arbol, that one, if you wanna spice it up a little, chunk them in there. Remember, 15 minutes, you pull them up out of there and if they don't look soft, let them soak a little more. But we ain't re-boiling them. We're just getting them soft enough that they'll go through that blender. You seen me pull them out. Put them tomatoes right over on the cutting board because we put them in there just cored. Cut them in half, chunk them in the blender, all four of them. The onion, the peppers, the garlic, put them all in there. You may have to give them a mash down in that blender. Put it on puree, high, whatever you got. Make the lights flash, but I want to see it blend that sauce to make it a deep, dark, rich red. Take the lid off, get you a sample. You want to make sure that you get enough salt to a tomato based thing like that because you're going to need it. That broth that is over there that you boiled them peppers up in, get you a cup full of that and save it. So we got this sauce. We got us a 12 inch cast iron skillet over here, my good field. Got us about maybe three tablespoons of corn oil in there that we're going to fry these tortillas. Now the tortillas I'm telling you about, you're going to need eight of them. You need to take them out like last night just let them sit on the counter till you see them begin to curl a little and get stale because they will crisp up faster that way. I'm gonna cut mine about like so. Because I want Shan to maybe think that we've been to Taco Bell when we get through. We're gonna take a one participant sample only to the swimming pool. And we're gonna let him get in there and when he starts to sizzle good, we're going to know that it's time to fry the rest of them. Already have you something with some paper towel in there to put these in. 
because one thing that I do different to mine, a lot of people cook these in it and then just pour the sauce back in there to it. But folks, we I like to cook that sauce first in that cast iron skillet, get me a little more flavor built up, then we'll add them back to it. Now when you get them in here, it's sort of like making popcorn. You know how you gotta sort of shuffle things around here because things is gonna start browning pretty fast. We are gonna turn this down just a little, but we wanna make sure that everybody gets toasted. You wanna make sure that you flip everybody and everybody is good. what we're after don't that crunch want them to crisp up like that so we got everybody done and i will tell you this you can take them at this point if you think that you don't want to bite that big and you can just tear them in half and go ahead and put your lid on but crack it don't seal it i don't want nothing to start sweating and we get no moisture in there so just let it sit right there sauce get him in Ooh, ain't that a beautiful sound now this is where we reserve that broth for Hang on, folks, because this is a little hot. It's got to come off here for just a minute. So I'm going to set it right here where y'all can keep an eye on it. I just want to set it right here. And I hear a lot of you saying, you can't put that tomato-based stuff in your cast iron. I'm going to tell you what, if it's seasoned proper and you take care of it, you can. Is it hard on cast iron? Yeah, it sure is. But if you do it right, you won't have no trouble. <clears throat> now, that reserve broth that we had out there had left. Remember, I told you to save a cup. Take about maybe a half of that cup, fourth, put her in here because we don't want to leave none of this behind. And as we cook this down, this is going to get thicker than that. So I want to give it just a little bit of juice to go back in here because we're going to boil it pretty good over there for just a little while. We've got our burner back to going. We're going to start on about a medium to medium low heat. We want to come see this go back to a little bubble simmer and make sure you constantly stir it because we don't want nothing to burn. But we want that simmer for about four to five minutes to get all that flavor locked in there a little better. So we're gonna take this off and let it set because we gotta fry some cackleberries to put with this. Well, this is gonna go pretty quick when it starts to happen because we're fitting to fry up three eggs. But first of all, I wanna tell you, put that skillet on some heat, give it a little greasing of some kind, whether you got bacon grease, you got some spray, whatever. Whoa, we're in luck today. Look what the cowboy pulled out of his pocket. Three cackle berries. There goes the first one. The second one. And the third one. Now at this time and point, I would like to give this side a little salt and pepper. About that much. I just like to make sure that them eggs is on their own. They ain't leaning on somebody else. And they'll slide around that skillet, see how they move. You can see that these move pretty well and they have begun to set up. Now you can cook your eggs however you see fit. I like mine sort of over easy, over medium, but let's see what we can do. You see me jerk this out and some of you saying, you can't use that on cast iron. I ain't cleaning with it. I'm flipping eggs. I used to work at IHOP. It's more of a rolling over deal, as you see. When you're cooking with these, you just roll them over. Oh, did you see that guy there? And he's mad about it too, he is. Skillet that we're gonna be able to take them off here in just a second. 
and leave them to where they can warm. And guess when that's going to take place? Right now. But while that is sitting right there, watch this hand. It's going right over here and we're going to let this red sauce warm back up. And we're not going to put them tortillas in there till it's warmed back up and went to bubbling. So get her spread out here. What comes next? Our tortillas. Just throw them in there, folks. And we're going to spread the love around. You hear that when they're hitting? They got that crunch to them. So here's where you have to just go to mixing to where you get some of that on everybody. Now, if you don't like it that thick at this time, hey, some of that broth that we got back in there, put it back on there. Me, I like them this away. You want to run this around there and cook them till you know that you got everybody covered good in that sauce, but you don't want to just sit there and do it for so long that you end up making something soggy. It don't take long, about three minutes, it's a done deal. Just make sure that everybody's got some of that red sauce loving all over them. Now, I got some queso fresco. You can use whatever kind of cheese you want, but I like to crumble it right up here on there now so it's gonna get some of that melting action. And you use as little or as much as you like. Here come the cackle berries. We're going to top it off with some avocados. I really like them. They Make are, it look pretty. They are healthy. We don't have to pretty up a plate where I come from to get folks to eat it, but I am doing my best for y'all today. Now, since we done put these on there, folks, you know what's going to have to happen, don't you? You're going to have to have a little more salt because avocados always need some salt. Not much. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get the produce shot. Okay, good. Not much, but that's what I'm after. Get me some of that running down in there. Some of them tortillas. Some of that sauce. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. <laughs> if I had a hammer, I'd hammer all day. If you eat that stuff right there, you can hammer all you want. That's called the hammer dance. Y'all know that guy's always break dancing. What was his name? MC Hammer? Yeah. This is my hammer. This ain't MC's. The red sauce to me just blends so much rich heartiness in there. The, the, using the peppers that way, the dried ones, and then when you toast them and then you bring them back and let them sit in that steam water, blend them all together. Don't get no better than that. It's a rich, hearty taste, and it's not really got a bite in it. When they ain't watching, put two of them chili de ball in there. You're going to be wishing you did. Over here. Now, this is not beef. Right here. This is not beef. Do, do you like egg? I am so glad y'all dropped by today, the wagon. We appreciate it for watching. We don't take it for granted that you do because we know everybody is busy. So be sure that you watch, but also be sure you like, share, and subscribe and pass the goodness around the world because Mr. Rogers said what? We need more good neighbors. As always, I tip my hat to all them servicemen and women and veterans and all who have kept our country safe and free. That old glory can sit there and fly above that wagon. That's what it's about. But folks, I may have pronounced the name in this wrong, and I'm not doing that in any mistaste or misjudgment. That's just the only way I know how to say it. So don't be getting down on me, chili kilis. All I can tell you is they're really good. So we'll see you down the chili kilis trail. Say, so y'all been asking for it, and we're going to deliver. <laughs> we are. What are we delivering? Chili chili kilis. Now I'm done confused. Chilaquiles. 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 Kitty, 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 meow, meow. <laughs> now you can see. Start looking at the camera. Look at the camera, she said. I can read the name on the back of it. It says Chilaquiles. <laughs>